Today, I will show you how to use the Install 360 No Stitch plugin within the brand new Adobe Premiere Pro 2019. If you don't know already, one of the killer features of the brand new Install 260 Pro 2 camera right here is the direct integration with the Adobe Premiere Pro and take the boring 260 stitching part out. The camera create a fully stitched low res proxy file that gets stored on the SD card 7. When you import your raw footage into Premiere, the plugin automatically associates all six high res video files with the fully stitched proxy. So you can go from capture to edit without first dealing with organizing high res footage, stitching it, exporting it, and then begin your edit, AKA the old workflow. Oh, hell no. Install 260 and Adobe really redefined the game for 360 post production, which is pretty big deal. I will show you the complete workflow and how I do media management as DIT on set. Time to buckle up, get your learning cap on, and let's get it spread. Before I show you how to use the no stitch plugin, I want to show you different workflow on getting the media into your computer, on set or in the studio, with Mac or PC. One standout feature of the Insta 260 Pro that no one talk about is that the Pro is probably the only Mac friendly professional 260 camera out there. If you like me, use a MacBook Pro as you see right here on set, Picking the Insta360 Pro 2 is a no-brainer. In Pro 2, one thing very different from the original Pro 1 right here is instead of one SSD or one SD card, you need to move media from six micro SD card and one regular SD card from the camera to your on-set storage. That is totally seven cards you need to deal with. As a DIT on-set, that's kind of a nightmare. Luckily, if you watch this video and take my suggestion on getting the memory bundle, you have this multi SD card hub reader that you can get organized and transfer everything in one go. To save you some time, I already took all the SD cards out from this camera and insert them into the SD card hub reader, plug that into my Mac, and go ahead and open the stitcher right here. As you see, after you plug in, you see like seven SD card right here on the desktop. And then you go, go ahead and open the Stitcher. So right here under Pro 2 File Management, go ahead and click that. Using Metal 1, use SP Hub and SD card reader. Go ahead and hit Import. And then with the instruction, just go ahead and select the directory from any storage card. So go ahead and hit that. And go to your desktop, right? And just go find the storage. So let's just find the first one and just hit open. As you see, you see the Insta360 Pro footage right here. Go ahead, hit open. And now the Stitcher is loading the project. And now after it load, it will start play right here. I'll stop it. And see all the footage right here. It's very, very fast. So you can go ahead and hit select all, select all the footage. And then you can import content to local drive right here. Hit that. Pick a location and that hit open. And in the last screen, you have the option to delete and wipe out all the old media file after successfully import. And then you can just go ahead and hit import. But again, don't ever wipe your media on set. I would suggest insert a brand new set of SD cards and do a double backup when you back to your studio. If you don't like to get your SD card out on set and you have big Thumbs. The fingers you have used to dial are too fat. To obtain a special dialing wand, please mash the keypad with your palm now. <laughs> there is an easier way to transfer your footage. Come with the camera, there is this Ethernet to USB cable. First, turn on your camera. 
like so. And also make sure all the SD cards back onto the camera. After the camera turn on, go ahead and select the second row, the middle icon right here with the SD card. Go ahead and select that. And then we load all the SD card content. So don't pull any SD card out, let it to load. So after a successful load, you say read, reading stored devices, it will actually give you an IP address and we render this IP address. That's what you need to connect that with your PC or Mac. So go ahead and put the ethernet cable in. And then the other end, you plug that into your computer. And this time, let's demo it with the PC instead. So now we are in our PC. Go ahead and open your file export and just in the edges part, go ahead and type in the URL. You just write down on the camera. Before that, have two bash slash right here. Just to make sure that it's not going to a URL instead. And at the end, bash slash, you add in pro2 and then bash slash. And that is the correct URL for you to find the footage inside the Pro 2. Go ahead and hit enter. And as you see, it will go into a network drive inside the Pro 2, which connect right now. If you open each SD card, you see all the information right here. And we have seven of them, six micro SD card and one regular SD card. So now open your install to succeed Stitcher right here. And then pick the Pro 2 file management. And then you pick number two, connect Pro 2 to PC via a cable. So go ahead and hit import. It'll give some instruction and ask you to choose the root directory, hit that. And then again, copy and paste that URL. Again, two bash out on the top. Hit enter. And just go ahead and choose any SD card root folder. Go ahead and see select folder. As you see now, all the footage is loaded inside Stitcher. Go ahead again, pick select all, choose everything. And then right here, just see import content to local drive, pick a location, and then same idea, go ahead and hit import, then you're all done. Using the USB to Ethernet cable to transfer footage is very, very convenient, but the transfer speed is slower. If you fill all six of your micro SD cards and they are like 128 gigabyte per cars, then I would still suggest using the USB hub right here instead. After you get all your media into your local hard drive, the next thing is to open Premiere and start edit. Yes, no rough stitch, no more stitching. Just go directly into Premiere and start cutting away. Before we start, here is my workflow overview. Step one, review media in Insta360 Stitcher. Step two, import media using the Insta360 Premiere plugin. Step three, edit in Premiere, the fun part. Step four, log, edit, and render. Step 4.5, make sure you render out as a master in the highest resolution possible in DNxHR or ProRes if you are on a Mac. Not GoPro Cineform. There are bugs in the current version of the Premiere 2019. Cineform takes twice as long as DNxHR in render and it drops frames. I literally waste hours of rendering time to get garbage drop frame master and I have to render Photoshop patches to fix the random drop frames. So don't make the same mistake, especially if you are on a tight deadline and tight budget. Step 5. Import master back into Premiere and check stitching. Step six, fix any problem in stitching with Mystica VR or rotoscoping. Step seven, render final output in H.264 for Oculus Go or YouTube. Now, let me walk you through the entire process. And let's do step one, let's open Insta360 Stitcher. So as you see, after I drop in footage, one of the advantage to using the Stitcher to source out footage is it give you information about the resolution and the frame rate. And if it's mono or stereo, so we have like 8K 3D 30 frame, 8K 60 frame, we have 6K, but with iLog, you see all the information. So now you can write down which one you need and also like preview it from here. So that's very convenient to do the first organization to pick the useful footage. And then go ahead and step two, 
open window, open extension. Make sure you choose the Insta360 Pro importer. Open that. Go ahead. If it's not dock, dock right here. And then right here, go ahead and hit import and import the necessary footage you just marked down with the stitcher. So select all the folders. We actually make a mistake right here. As you see, why not everything imports as a mono two by one ratio, but actually we shot with stereoscopic top and bottom. If you shot everything in stereo, you have the option to only import mono and that actually will speed up the whole process, rendering time and everything. The footage is actually mono. If you only mono, I would suggest you pick the content type mono. So your rendering time will take half compared to stereo. So that's very important. But if you shot stereo, intends to use stereo, you actually need to make sure step one to pick the correct content type. So why not if you check the footage in the importer, you see that why now everything is stereo, AK. And if you check the footage right here in property, you see that it's stereoscopic AK by AK. Huge files. The next step is actually pretty important inside the importer is to make sure that you pick the correct reference frame and stitch preference you want. So go ahead and I see this gear icon, hit that and you will open a window right here. And in here you can pick the stitching mode. So if you're familiar with the Insta360 stitcher, it's the exact same setting. And I usually pick optical flow, not the new optical flow. The reason why is in general, it's a better quality to use the optical flow instead of the new optical flow, especially you're in low light or your camera is on the move. So I just always use optical flow. And again, in the goal here is even using this like no stitch workflow, I still want my first render to be master, meaning that the output quality had to be as good as possible. So that will limit my time to fix in the problem frame. So less problem frame to fix, meaning less mystical time, meaning faster workflow. So no brainer, I'm gonna pick the best setting ever with optical flow. In here, it depends on the sample type. Most of the time actually fast is good enough, but if you have a moving camera, for example, if you attach your Pro 2 on a drone, I would suggest go with the slow. If your camera is on the move, make sure you pick optical flow stabilization. But here the camera is not on the move, so I don't need to put the extra time to use optical flow. And then right here, if you are not happy with the reference frame, you can always hit here. It's the same window you see in the Insta360 stitcher. And as you see, it generally picked the middle of the entire timeline as a reference frame. But let's say that if that is not a good frame, people are too close to the camera. So right here, I can set this as a reference frame. But before we do that, I also want to turn on the top optimization. So if you follow my old tutorial, you know that if you shot this indoor, there's a ceiling and you see the ceiling stitching is getting funky. You should turn this on will fix everything for you. So this is like a magic button. I just always turn it on. So now go ahead and set as a reference frame and that's done. Go ahead and save. So you get the point. So go ahead and just go through each footage and set your stitching preference. After that, just go ahead and import the footage in your timeline. So go ahead and drag to create a new timeline. I will also make sure that the sequence setting is correct. By the way, I'm in the newest version of Premiere. So usually it would just correct. As you see right here, I want to actually find a point that, let's just mute that that I'm not in the camera. That's actually a perfect start. This is actually the start of the frame. Just go ahead and cut it. But you get the idea. And if you notice one thing, this button is automatically turned on. So what is this? This is actually a proxy button in Premiere. So meaning that right now I'm serving a proxy. If you play the video, it's playing it right now. As you see right here, it's not a hundred percent real time playback. We still have drop frame. The reason why is actually not because of the plugin is because I'm running OBS and running a screen recording. And I also have a separate screen running different software. So I don't get a pretty smooth playback, but this is the AK by AK 16 K footage. It get this kind of smooth playback. That is pretty good as a proxy. You turn this on, you see that? I actually got like pretty smooth playback. I mean, the resolution, well, the resolution is really low because I turn it in a 16 by one. So at this point, you can do 
all the regular thing you do to 360 footage, including color grading, adding special effect, and title, and it will render correctly into the final render. So like for here, I want to add a title, so I'll go ahead and insert a new layer, turn off VR mode, some title, and then go ahead and drop in your favorite planes to fear on the text, remove the feather, go ahead and turn on VR preview. Again, this is a stereoscopic footage, so make sure that you right click on the setting, show anagraph, hit OK. Now, in order to make the text load into the scene, you actually need to add some disparity right here. And don't worry if you don't know what I'm doing right now. I mentioned all of this in my other tutorial. So just go over my tutorial for the brand new Premiere 2019 if you get lost in this part. So you see, that's some test. By the way, this couple is actually a pretty famous K-pop star. And that is a Hollywood red carpet event with Asian Film Festival. So a lot of famous people actually right here. Let's say that that is my final log edit. And I'm gonna render a master out and bring it back into Premiere and check edit. So go ahead and export. So if you can see the preview here, the preview actually proved the really, really high resolution instead of the proxy file for the final render. As you see, the image quality here is like superb. So go ahead and use QuickTime and then pick DNX HR or ProRes if you're on a Mac, but not GoPro Cineform, just don't use it. And then here, hit Match Source, and then your render is 8K by 8K, 30 frames per second, because you're matching the source. By the way, I usually use DNX HR HQ, 8-bit, that's good enough quality. And then just double check VR video, and then you can either queue that into Adobe Media Encoder, or you can just directly export inside Premiere. Just a tip though, usually it's faster and safer to render directly inside Premiere instead of bouncing this into Media Encoder. As you see, it's gonna take a while because what Premiere is doing right now is not only render, it's actually leverage. Oh, the time just dropped, 25 minutes. Okay, it's actually pretty fast. So what Premiere is doing right now is actually leverage GPU. Let me show you the performance. You see it's leveraging my GPU to render and stitch the footage for me. The benefit is very obvious. Not only because it saved you time, it also saved you to round trip render. There's no render again in Mystica, then render again in Premiere, then render again back in Mystica. So save you less render, meaning that the image quality in general will be better because you are not over render your footage. I don't think it's necessary for me to show you the rest. Basically just import this master back into Premiere and find problem stitching and then fix it in Mystica, which you can follow this tutorial if you need more help on how to fix stitching problem with Mystica with the Insta360 Pro 2. If you like this workflow and you want to purchase this camera, the Insta360 Pro 2, it will really help me if you buy through my link. So not only will you get a free battery and save some money, you will also help support this channel for me to continue to make you more tutorial and awesome content to create awesome 260 video. Thank you for watching this tutorial. As you saw, the no stitch workflow is not magic. I still sometimes do not get a smooth playback. So in the next review, I will tell you when to use this workflow or when to use my old Mystica and proxy workflow. And what is the render speed comparison? So you can choose the best workflow for the right job. I know you are still waiting for my love and hate relationship review of the Insta360 Pro 2 right here. It is coming up. I did so many professional shoots within the last two months with this camera and I had so much to share. So it took me a little longer to finish it, but it will be great. If you need sample footage right now, watch my 60 frame per second comparison of the Insta360 Pro 2 with the Kendall Obsidian S. So you see the image quality yourself. You can download the Apple to Apple comparison footage as well. So don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tutorials and reviews. And I will see you next time. VR creators level up on Creator Up.